Now that we know the basics of wind, let's start looking at three types of wind patterns that we can see across the globe. Number one is going to be local breezes. Today we'll talk about land and sea breezes. How are those pressure differences occurring to create the breeze going from the land or from the sea? We are going to start by drawing in a sea breeze. So go ahead and locate that box on your notes. We're going to draw in a sea breeze, a breeze that happens around the beach. Okay, we're going to start by putting in our beach material. This is, of course, the sand or the land here. We're going to add ourselves a little bit of the ocean or the sea. And because this is labeled as a sea breeze, knowing winds are named by where they come from, we want to add in the arrow showing the wind direction. Okay, the wind direction, again, being labeled as a sea breeze, is going to go from the sea to the land. So I can draw in that arrow, labeling it as a sea breeze. So as we take a look at our list on top, we want to make sure we include all these things in our diagram of how a sea breeze would form. All we know so far is it would look like this based on the fact it's called a sea breeze. So we've already got the arrow showing the wind direction. Let's now move on to figure out where the cold and the hot air is. Actually, before we do cold and hot air, let's figure out where is our high and low pressure going to be. Because we knew wind is always moving from high to low, we can easily figure out where the high and low pressure are based on our sea breeze arrow. Because our wind is going this direction, it has to start at a high pressure zone and go to a low pressure zone. Because this is my high pressure, I can automatically figure out this is going to be my cool sinking air. Over here with my low pressure, I automatically know this is going to be my warm rising air. So I've got my high and low pressure, I've got my cold and hot air. Now I have to figure out, is this occurring during the day at the beach or at night? Well, what do I know about heating and cooling of land versus sea? I know that land heats faster. So because land heats faster, it will have an overall higher or lower temperature depending if it's day or if it's night. Now because I see that my low pressure warm air is hanging out over the land, that tells me that this must be happening during the day. Right? This is going to occur during the day when the sun is shining at its strongest down to both the land and the sea. Making the warmest temperatures occur here creates low pressure the cooler temperatures here creating high pressure, causing the sea breeze to move from the high pressure over the water to the low pressure over the land. Okay, This would be happening during the day. So most people that live by a large body of water know during the day I have a gentle breeze, oftentimes going from the water to the land, bringing a cool breeze in to the hot temperatures on the surface. So let's add in a little bit of our notes here about what just happened, right? We know that water or oceans heat and cool slower due to their high specific heat. It takes much, lo much longer for that solar energy to get down and heat up the lump of this water. So the heat and cool much slower. That means during the day at the beach, what I'm going to notice is that the air over the land tends to be much warmer than air over the sea. Because I get the warm pocket of air over the land, that creates my low pressure here, and the cool pocket of air over the water, that creates my high pressure here. Now, because we are talking about winds, we want to figure out how does that breeze occur. Well, winds, breezes, happen as air moves from high pressure air that is cooler over
over the water, making its way to low pressure air that is warmer over the land. And again, that has to do with the heating and cooling that occurs during the day, making the high pressure over the water, the low pressure over the land, the air tries to balance out and creates a sea breeze. Now at night, once the sun sets, we see something different. We notice that the wind direction will reverse. That will occur because what we know is the land then starts to cool off. It cools off much faster than the water, so our land ends up being the cool high pressure and the water ends up being our warm low pressure, causing the direction of the breeze to reverse. So if we work our way back up to the top there, let's draw in our land breeze. Again, let's set the stage. Here's our land and our water. Now we know that this is happening at night. So at night, the sun is not shining to keep the land warm, so we see the cool air occurring here on the land. The water retains its heat. It cools off much slower than the land, so the water stays warmer at night, creating a different location for the high and low pressure system. Now that we have located the high and low pressure, we know air always tries to balance from high to low. This is my breeze. But now, because it's originating here at the land, I am naming it land breeze, as all winds are named by where they come from. Okay, you should be able to complete a summary question here now that you've finished. Go back and maybe color code your diagrams, add in warm and cool temperatures or some blue or tan to the land and water as you practice drawing both the land and sea breeze.